So a lot of people wonder about how we can accommodate for a, a variety of different patients with different bone structures and different sizes and different bone densities, different patient requirements, uh, and uh, how we can accommodate for that with joint replacement technology. And so this is a short video uh, about hip replacement technology and the way in which we can customize every joint replacement for you uh, at the time of your operation with the modern instrumentations and implant systems that we have at our disposal. So this is the behind the theatre's uh, zone and this is where we keep all our instruments and implants for our joint replacement surgeries. Uh, so I'm going to take you through and show you some of the uh, tools that we have at our disposal to be able to uh, do your joint replacement uh, in a customised way. So these are all the trays that have been sterilised. You can see that they're all wrapped up. And so uh, they're all wrapped up in their sterile containers there and we open them up at the time of the surgery and um, they remain sterilized. There's little markers inside of them and the tape there um, assists us in being able to know which ones have been uh, sterilized correctly. So most hip replacement systems have got four main parts. There's the cup part which we call the acetabular component and then there's the stem part which goes inside the thigh bone that's like a rod and um, then upon the stem component there's a, a femoral head which is the the ball of the hip joint and uh, that articulates with a liner which is a bearing which goes inside the the socket and the the head and the liner can be made of a variety of materials generally speaking there's the three main materials there's polyethylene which is sort of like a really wear resistant plastic there's ceramics uh, and there's uh, also metals and um, there's some advantages and disadvantages of all of these. Uh, so this is a hip replacement system and uh, during the operation we've got the ability to be able to use uh, any combination of these implants together to be able to provide us with a, a personalized solution to the uh, patient's anatomy and requirements and so uh, the decisions uh, that we'll make will be based on uh, things like uh, soft tissue length and the strength of the bone, the size of the bone, the uh, density of the bone uh, and, um, uh, and stability of the joint in motion and what the patient's going to be doing with their hip postoperatively. So here's an example of, uh, of some of the uh, options that we've got. So for instance up the top here these are all different cups and uh, all of these cup shells, they've, uh, they're all different sizes. So you can see here, that's quite a big cup. That's a 60 millimeter cup. Uh, but here, here's a, there's a 58 millimeter cup. Uh, and then down here, there's a 56. And so it all goes all the way down, all the way down in sizings, all the way down to uh, quite small sizes, and even get smaller than these ones again. So, uh, and then inside the cup, what we do is we put a bearing and so there's a whole lot of different bearing options that you can see here and so these are all the bearing options that we've got and uh, uh, the decision will be made a little bit on what the patient's going to be doing and uh, what their requirements are, how, what, their, uh, what their sporting pursuits are and what they're doing for fitness. Um, and different head size, uh, I mean different head sizes and types and geometries. So here's an example of a constrained head which is one that actually locks into the socket to uh, prevent dislocation and people are at high risk. Um, and then there's different bearing type, types which uh, for instance here this is a metal head uh, made of a, a cobalt alloy. Um, and we've also got ceramic options as well. Um, and so, uh, so here's an example of the, of the ceramic heads. Um, they do go onto a stem and so there's a whole variety of different stem options here uh, and they go up and down in millimeter increments so there's a, a size 8 stem and then uh, and then the, down here there's a there's a size 9 stem and then there's a size 10 stem and and so forth and so we can accommodate for people with really big um, 
uh, with really big bones uh, who uh, who require quite large implants or or even very petite people with with quite small bones and um, and so we've got uh, we can basically make a personalised uh, 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 implant for every person at the time of the intervention without necessarily going to the to the uh, uh, lengths of actually manufacturing one specific for the patient.